Hi everyone, welcome to this Make a Medic tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about oxygen therapy. So especially as a result of the COVID pandemic, oxygen therapy has been in the news a lot and it's been something that all doctors need to have familiarized themselves with to manage patients accordingly. And it's one of those things that on face value seems fairly simple, fairly obvious. However, there are a few quite confusing aspects to it. For example, I remember getting confused myself when patients would initially be on a certain number of litres per minute of oxygen, and then all of a sudden they're being described as being on a certain percentage of oxygen. So the interplay between the terms used to describe oxygen therapy were a cause of confusion amongst many of us junior doctors. So I'm hoping this video will try and succinctly round up the concepts involved in oxygen therapy so that you can better understand how it works. So first and foremost, to understand oxygen therapy, there are a few key concepts that you need to be aware of. So principle number one is that the oxygen that comes out of a canister or out of the wall is 100% oxygen. So for example, the, the air within a nasal cannula will be 100% oxygen. The second concept is something called peak inspiratory flow rate. So this is a measure of the flow rate of air that is passing into your airways during inspiration. And for most people at rest, it will be around 20 to 30 litres per minute. Thirdly, FiO2, or fraction of inspired oxygen, is a term used to describe the oxygen concentration of the air that is entering your airways and being delivered to your alveoli. So the aim of oxygen therapy is to increase the FiO2, thereby increasing the concentration of oxygen within the alveoli, and hence making sure that more of it passes down the concentration gradient into the blood. And lastly, there are a number of different types of devices that are used to deliver oxygen to patients, and they can be split into either variable performance devices or fixed performance devices. So variable performance means that you cannot guarantee the FiO2 that's delivered by those devices because it depends largely on the peak inspiratory flow. Examples include most of the devices that are quite commonly used, such as a nasal cannula, a Hudson face mask, and a non-rebreather mask. And an example of a fixed performance device is a Venturi mask. So I'm going to use a couple of examples to illustrate how oxygen therapy works. So here we have Brenda, who's 68 years old, and she is COVID positive. So on admission, she had an oxygen saturation of 89% on room air, and her peak inspiratory flow rate was 40 litres per minute suggesting that she's trying quite hard to breathe. So what you do at that point is you put her on 4 litres per minute via nasal cannula and it brings up her oxygen saturations to 96%. And consequently you get a reduction in her breathing effort and hence your peak inspiratory flow comes down to about 20 litres per minute. So let's have a look at what's actually going on then during these uh, changes that we're making. So once we put the 4 litres per minute via nasal cannula on her, her peak inspiratory flow rate comes down to 20 litres per minute. So that means that she has 20 litres per minute of air going into her airways during inspiration, of which 4 litres per minute will be from the nasal cannula, and hence that will be 4 litres of 100% oxygen. The remaining 16 litres will come from the atmosphere, which is, of course, 21% oxygen. So this can be brought together using the following formula to determine what the fraction of inspired oxygen is. Of course, there's going to be a number of other factors that do play into this, such as the amount of dead space. However, just to keep things simple, this is a formula that can be used to roughly gauge the fraction of inspired oxygen when using oxygen therapy. So in this example, we can see that she has 4 litres of 100% and 16 litres of 21% atmospheric oxygen. And so if you average that out, that would give roughly a fraction of inspired oxygen of 36.8%. So the key point I'm trying to illustrate here is that the FiO2 is dependent on the amount of oxygen flowing through the device, as well as how hard the patient is breathing. Because how hard the patient is breathing determines how much atmospheric air they're drawing in and hence diluting the oxygen you are providing. So let's say she deteriorates and she becomes even more breathless and starts breathing harder all of a sudden, but you keep the nasal cannula on. So let's say her peak inspiratory flow rate doubles to 40 litres per minute. 
So this means that she is still only getting four litres via the nasal cannula, and she's having to get the remaining 36 litres of her requirement from the atmosphere. So essentially what this means is that she is diluting that four litres of oxygen in far more atmospheric air, and so the FiO2 of the air that's entering her airways has gone down. So now let's say we spot her desaturating, we spot her struggling to breathe, so we take the nasal cannula off and we place her on 15 litres by a non-rebreathe mask. And for the sake of this example, we'll assume that her peak inspiratory flow rate remains at 40 litres per minute. So by making this change, you're able to deliver 15 litres of oxygen via the non-rebreathe mask, and so she requires less air from the atmosphere to make up her requirement. And so the FiO2 goes up because the ratio of oxygen to atmospheric air has increased. So I'm going to use another example to illustrate the points I've just made. However, this example is not strictly accurate. So a lot of medical students from most medical schools will be taught that you shouldn't give too much oxygen to a patient with COPD who is a chronic retainer because it can kill off their hypoxic drive to breathe. So they begin to hypoventilate and hence they become hypercapnic. So the mechanism behind this isn't entirely true. There's actually a more complex mechanism regarding VQ mismatch, which explains the phenomenon of hypercapnia in COPD patients who are hyperoxygenated. However, I'm still going to use the previous rationale just to illustrate this point because I think it is quite neat in explaining how oxygen therapy works. So here we have Bill, 74 years old, has presented with an exacerbation of COPD. He's a CO2 retainer and his target sats are 88 to 92%. On admission, he has an oxygen saturation of 80% on room air and his peak inspiratory flow rate is 40 litres per minute. So straight away, we place him on 8 litres per minute via a Hudson face mask and it improves his oxygen saturation to 90%. And consequently, he begins to breathe a little bit more easily and his peak inspiratory flow comes down to 30 litres per minute. So let's see what this looks like. So initially, as soon as we put the mask on, he's still breathing at 40 litres per minute, meaning that 8 litres is coming from the Hudson face mask, 100% oxygen, and 32 litres is coming from the atmosphere, which is 21% oxygen. So using the formula we saw earlier, that would give us an FiO2 of 36.8%. So now if we, for academic purposes, continue with the assumption that giving too much oxygen to a COPD patient makes them hyperventilate, let's see what that does to their FiO2. So let's say that they start saturating a bit better, start to breathe more easily, and their peak inspiratory flow rate comes down to 30 litres per minute. However, you still keep the Hudson face mark, mask on at 8 litres per minute. So what this means now is that they have 8 litres coming from the Hudson face mask as before, but they have less coming from the atmosphere, so 22 litres per minute instead of 32 as before. So this means that the oxygen provided by the Hudson face mask makes up a bigger proportion of their inspiratory requirements, and so the FiO2 goes up because the oxygen is being diluted in less atmospheric air. So this will lead to an increase in their oxygen saturations and hypothetically let's say that leads to a decrease in their drive to breathe. So their peak inspiratory flow rate now goes down to 20 but we keep the Hudson face mask on. So again you can see what's happening here 8 litres via the Hudson face mask and only 12 litres from the atmosphere and so the FiO2 has gone up even further. So the point I'm trying to make here is that it's established a vicious cycle where the increase in FiO2 that's initially achieved by starting oxygen therapy leads to an increase in their SATs, which consequently leads to a decrease in their peak inspiratory flow rate. And if you keep the same mask on, it means that the oxygen provided is being diluted in less and less atmospheric air as their drive to breathe decreases, and so the FiO2 will increase bit by bit. So I just want to reiterate that this mechanism of hypoventilation due to hyperoxygenation in COPD patients isn't the reason why they end up developing 
hypercapnia if they're hypooxygenated. I will do a video at some point explaining why that is, but I, I hope that this example has actually illustrated the concepts behind oxygen therapy quite well. So now I'm just going to go on to explain how Venturi masks work. So Venturi masks are known as being fixed performance devices, meaning that they can deliver a fixed fraction of inspired oxygen. And the reason why they work is actually quite interesting. It gets a little bit physics-y, but I think it's quite useful to understand. So here we have a cross-section of a Venturi mask, and we will have a relatively low amount of oxygen flowing in to the end of the Venturi mask. So the oxygen will then go through this narrowing, and as with any gas or liquid, as it passes through a narrowing, it will speed up. And according to the Bernoulli principle, when things speed up, the pressure exerted by the gas in that circumstance decreases. And when pressure decreases, it draws air in from places of higher pressure. So that's what these apertures are for. So just to recap, oxygen goes in, it speeds up as it goes through the narrowing. The air in that bit that's sped up will have a lower pressure than the atmosphere. And so atmospheric air is drawn in through the apertures and mixed in with this jet of oxygen. So the diameter of the tube which narrows that jet and the sizes of the apertures will be specifically designed to ensure that a certain specified amount of air comes in for every litre of oxygen that passes through. So it essentially fixes the ratio at which the oxygen is diluted in atmospheric air. So even though you put a relatively low flow rate of oxygen into the device, by drawing in lots of atmospheric air, it will produce quite a high flow rate of this pre-prepared air, which contains a very specific concentration of oxygen. So this still fits in with the formula we have before. So in this circumstance, it would give rise to 24% oxygen but the size of the apertures and the diameter of that narrowing within the tube can be adjusted to achieve different FiO2s. And furthermore, the flow rate generated at the end will exceed the peak inspiratory flow rate of the patient. So let's say the patient is trying hard to breathe and their peak inspiratory flow rate is 40 litres per minute. If they have this mask on, they have up to 52 litres per minute of specifically 24% oxygen ready for them to breathe in. So they don't need any additional air that's coming from any source aside from the Venturi mask to meet their inspiratory requirements. So the key principles to know about the Venturi mask is that it's designed to mix a certain amount of atmospheric air with a certain amount of oxygen, thereby ensuring that it achieves a very specific FiO2. Secondly, it can only work within certain limits of oxygen flow rate, which is why most devices will specify how much oxygen needs to go through it. And finally, most importantly, the airflow generated by the Venturi mask exceeds the peak inspiratory flow of the patient, meaning that you can be certain that the, all the air that they are breathing in during inspiration will be 24% oxygen in this circumstance. So just going to make a quick comment on high flow nasal oxygen therapy, which has become used increasingly frequently of late, and brand names include OptiFlow. So it is a special type of nasal cannula that can deliver warmed and humidified air, such that patients can tolerate very, very high flow rates. So first and foremost, it's humidified and hence it's well tolerated, which means that patients can cope quite well with very high flow rates, up to about 80 litres per minute. And finally, as with the Venturi masks, the airflow will exceed the peak inspiratory flow, meaning that we can very accurately control the fraction of inspired oxygen.